Today I want you to say with me, come back. It's time for a comeback, church. And, and I want you to get this in your spirit. God's restoring things in your heart today. And I believe his word will bring life to us. I want to go into Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. You have your Bible. Open up your Bible. Or you have your phone. I invite you to go to Bible app. And if you haven't downloaded the Bible app, I highly encourage you to do so. And look at the daily devotionals. The Bible is what gives us, listen, the light of the word. The light of the word. The light direction in our life is in his word. Amen. It's light life into every decision that we make. Isaiah chapter 58. I want to read verse 11 and 12. And if you're ready to go into the word of God, would you say, oh yeah? yeah. Okay, let's go. The Lord will guide you continually. That's Isaiah 58 verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. You should be like a spring of water. Verse 12 says, those from among you shall build the old west places. Come on, somebody receive this word. You shall build uh, the waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. I hope I'm speaking to kings and priests in this house. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in you should be called that him that rebuilds him that restores say with me God restores close your eyes with me let's pray God I thank you for the privilege you give us to be in your house today I thank you for your love and your mercy God I thank you that when we think uh, we need justice you bring mercy <laughs> I thank you God that when we think we need uh, we, we need a situation to change you change our hearts I thank you, Father, that you're changing all things and putting them in order, leading us back to you. This is all about you. And today I pray, Holy Spirit, use my lips. Let it be you that speaks. Lord, I pray that in every heart today, your word will give fruit and that there will be breakthrough. God, I pray that today will be a day in which we see your hand of restoration upon us. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. The year is 1990. 1990. I remember as if it was yesterday. During a time in which I loved going to school, I loved going uh, to my soccer practice, I loved being and playing with my kids, and, I mean playing with my friends and, and playing with everybody around my neighborhood where everybody would play outside where video games were barely making an entrance, but Nintendo was cool, but soccer was better. You know what I'm saying? A time in which I enjoyed being outside, but I dreaded coming home. Because every time I would come home, my parents were fighting. Every time I would step into that, into that place, my parents were screaming at each other and I didn't know what to do except to get in the middle and say, don't be screaming at my mama. Don't be screaming at my mama. And I, I would go to church and, and they would say, what's your prayer request? I was in kids ministry. Somebody has a special prayer request. And I raise my hand and I'll say, hey, I have a prayer request that my dad will come to church. I have a prayer request that my parents will stop fighting. My mom tells me, listen, I think it's too late. For, for your dad and I, you're the oldest. I want you to understand this. I love you, but your dad and I are going to get a divorce. We're going to get a divorce, and I would just want you to know that I love you. And it's not because of, of you. You know, because I thought it was my fault that they were fighting. I thought I was doing something wrong. That because, because of me, I wasn't doing enough. That maybe that's what's happening at home. I, I should do more. The day that they're signing the papers... They're in the, law, in the lawyer's office. They're signing the papers. We've been praying. We've been fasting. We've been going to church and asking God to do a miracle. But it was too late. At least that's what they thought. They're looking, they're looking at each other. And right about when they're going to sign those papers, they look at each other and they say, why don't we give it one more try? Why don't we try one more time? I remember as if it was yesterday, my dad and the night coming next to me, on my bed and kneeling down and crying and praying and saying, God, if you're out there, come on, somebody, restore my family. God, I remember as if it was yesterday, I give you my life again. I come back for you to restore all these things in my life. See, my dad was a successful businessman. He ran his own clinic, but he had left his family behind. And I'm telling you, God is calling you back to what's more impo most important in your life. There's no place, I want you to get this, there's no better place for you to be successful than at home. 
There's no better place for you to be successful in relationship than when your wife and with your kids. Am I preaching to somebody today? Then with your parents and with those closest to you. And those closest to you are the ones that will shape Jesus into your heart. They'll teach you to forgive. They'll teach you to walk in ways that you say, I have to die to myself so that I can live in what he has for me. The next morning he said, let's go to church. I've been praying for years for him to go to church. He says, let's go to church. We walk into church, worship is happening, and he walks down the aisle into the altar, gets on his knees and starts crying to God. My mom and I look at each other and we're seeing the miracle of God in his heart. God changes hearts, church. God restores families, church. God can restore anything that you think is broken in your life. God wants to restore your dream for you to get back up. God wants to take you to that place that nobody else means things you can get into. As we see him there, we run into the altar. We pray together from that day forward. God changed my family. Everything shifted. Everything shifted. My parents started serving at church. My, my parents started being restorers of people. Listen, counselors of people that were getting a divorce. Because God will use what the devil tried to use for evil. God will use for good. God will use your mess and turn it into a message. I'm telling you today. If you say, God... I turn back to you. He will restore. He's a restorer of things that we think is too late. See, I didn't know this, but now I know. I didn't see, but now I see. What my dad was doing, turning back to Christ, was not only restoring his marriage, it was restoring my life. It was restoring my family. It was restoring my children. Can I tell you today, it's time for you to come back. It's time for you to come back to God and say, restore what's been broken. Somebody say with me, come back. He's a restorer of things. I want to read to you a story of Nehemiah. In your Bible, we're going to go through the story of Nehemiah. And I'm going to start in chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. Such an amazing story. Israel has been in a time of drought. Israel has been conquered their homes, their places, their walls, their nation has been destroyed. But Nehemiah is in a place of privilege. I need, to, I need you to get this. He is good, but his family is not good. He has everything he needs. He has the resources. He has a job. He's in a high place working for the king. But everybody around him, everybody that he loves, is in a place of ruin. And this is where the story picks up, chapter 1, Nehemiah, verse 3. And they said to me, this is Nehemiah speaking, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words, listen, when I heard these words that I sat down and wept. And mourn for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. When I saw what happened around, when, I, when I'm seeing what's happening around, am I preaching to somebody this morning? When I see what's happening around us, when, when I see what's happening to our, to our families, when I see what's happening around us, it says, Nehemiah says, I wept and I fasted. And he said, God, what do you want me to do? I want you to say this with me. I want you to say, God, what do you want me to do? Can I tell you, God doesn't want you to be an spectator in a game. He wants you to be part of the action. He wants you to get into that place in which God has made you for this time. I don't know if you get this. Some of you are like, I'm barely holding on to my marriage. I'm barely holding on to my job. I'm barely holding on to my kids. I'm barely holding on emotionally. Can you understand this? What you're doing is not just affecting you. It's affecting generations. And today, God wants to restore the joy in your heart. God wants to restore that in your fire that you say, I no longer want to do. I remember a person coming to me and said, Pastor, I no longer want to do this anymore. I don't, I don't love her anymore. I don't want to be with her anymore. And I said, listen, you might not want to, but God still has more for you than what you're thinking. It's not based on your strength. Nehemiah looks around and sees. I want you to imagine this scene. Everything is burned down. Everything's in ruins. He says, God... What do you want me to do? Can I tell you the lie of the enemy is that you're doing enough. 
Oh, you didn't hear me. The lie of the enemy is that you can't do more. The lie of the enemy is you're doing enough. And I believe today God's raising up a church that says, God, I'm available. That says, God, I want to do more for you. See, what happens when you see the need, you have to do something about it. When you see the need, see, Nehemiah could have stayed. He's, he's in the palace. He has everything he has, but then he sees the need. Am I preaching to somebody today? Is there anybody that has talked to God and say, God, I think I got to do more. I believe God's raising up right now people that are in their heart. Listen, in their heart, man, God wants me to do, do something. And I want to stir in you today the gift of God in your life. What he's placed in you is for this time, not for you to keep, but for you to multiply in chapter 2 of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, the story keeps telling us, Then I rose in the night, I and a few men with me. This is Nehemiah speaking. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. I want you to see that what God put in his heart to do. It says, I didn't tell anybody, nor was there any animal with me except the one which I wrote. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refused gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and its gates which were burned with fire. He heard what was happening then he went down to look. If you want God to restore things in your life, you gotta be willing to look past your own needs. You gotta look, you gotta look past, listen, what you need. If you want God to restore your relationship, if you got one to restore your marriage, if you want God to restore your finances, if you got one to restore for God to restore your dream, if you got if you want God to restore something in your life, you need to start looking past your own needs. See, we have an orphanage in Juarez. And this week they called me and told me, listen, Pastor, I just want to tell you that. We've been so blessed by everything that the church keeps on sending. And this week, not only did we have enough for everything that we needed, I want you to get this, they don't have a savings account. But what they have, they've learned to give. It says, it says Pastor, we fed everybody during the week, but we decided that we were going to go out to the streets here in our neighborhood and started passing out food. They gave out to over a hundred Families, Come on, listen to this. But what we sent for 52 kids to have food, they went out and it multiplied to 100 families. How many of you know God can multiply what you give? Listen, but you have to see the need. And not only see the need, you got to do something about what God is putting in your heart. But pastor, I'm bitter. But pastor, huh, you don't know what happened in the last church. You don't know what happened in my, in my last relationship. See, I'm telling you, even if you went through a divorce, even if you went through a hard situation, it's not too late for God to restore. Even if your parents are no longer together, how about you start bringing the, your family back together? I'm telling you, God wants to use you to a place that you never thought could take you. But you're going to say, God, I'm available. I see the need. And I want to do something about it. I want to read on chapter 2, I I forgot, verse 17 and 18. It says, then I said to them, you see the distress that we're in. He he sees the the need and then he gathers the people. And he says, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Listen to this. Man, I'm tired of being a victim. I'm tired of being told. Come on, somebody, that I'm a minority. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody now. I'm tired of people saying that the church has its place. Stay in that scripture with me. I'm tired of telling people, of listening to people to say you don't have that resources. But I'm most tired of us not coming together. I'm most tired of seeing what's happening around and for us not to say it's time to rebuild look at the person next to you tell him it's time to rebuild it's time to rebuild it's time to rebuild he goes into that place and he sees i want to read verse 17 again and it says come down let us build the wall and if we build the reproach will leave i want you to get this when is this gonna end when is this gonna finish in my family if you rebuild it'll start changing 
Verse 18 says, verse 18 says, And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that had, he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Can somebody say that with me? Let's say it together. Let us rise up and build. He tells them, listen, let, look at what's happening. Listen, we're here. Let's do something about it. Then they set their hands to do this good work. They set their hands to do this good works. Yesterday we had our, our couple seminar. We had a great time. And I'll be honest with you, in the back of my head I was thinking, man, Canelo's fighting right now. And we're here and, and we have our, our, our seminar, you know, and we're having a great time. And I, I, I know several of you didn't come to the seminar because Canelo was fighting. I know. It's okay. We're praying for you. We're, we're praying for you. But I get home and the first thing I do is check on the status of the fight. Man, what happened? You know, let me see how the fight is. And I see that Canelo, come on, somebody, if you saw that fight, takes a one, two, and takes a nice, boom, boom, brings them down. And I was like, mm, that's my boy. That's what, hey, Santi, come here, come here, come here. Hey, man, look at this. There's a way you do this. There's a way you do this. You know, you got, the other guy has his guard up, but because Canelo knows how to use his hands, come on, somebody, hey, boom, boom, takes them down. And I'm excited looking at that. The Holy Spirit speaks to my life and says, because God will speak to you where you are. He speaks to your language. He speaks to my heart. He says, you know, you're so good at using your, using your hands to take people down. You got to start using your hands to build people up. We're so good at using our hands to bring a knockdown on people. But we don't know how to use our hands to get down and lift people up. And maybe you've been knocked down, but today I'm here to tell you, Jesus is here to lift you up. He restores you, and he wants to use you to restore other people. Somebody say, restore. See, restoration is not the thing that I had before. Restoration is something that's greater than before. They get to that place, and they see everything is desolate. Everything is in ruins. Then chapter 3 reads, chapter 3 of Nehemiah says, Then Eliashib, I want you to see this order. The high priest rose up with his brethren, the priest, and built the sheep gate. The, they concentrated, consecrated it and hung its doors. They built as far as the Tower of the Hundred and consecrated it. Then as far as the Tower of, the tower of Hananel. Next, next, the Eliashib, Eliashib, the men of Jericho, built. And next to them, Sakur, the son of Imri, built. Also the sons of Hesana built the fish gate. I need you to see this. They built the sheep gate. They, they built the fish gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. They start rebuilding and the high priest get up. I'm here to tell you that you are the priest of your house. I'm here to tell you that your greatest ministry is your household, is your wife, is your kids. It's, I'm here to tell you that it's time to rebuild things in your life that you have forgotten about that you think it's too late to do so. And they start rebuilding and it's an order that happens. They rebuild, they rebuild those gates and then they go and the next person starts rebuilding. See, can I tell you there's a domino effect that happens when you pay it forward. When you say, I'm going to do this and then this is going to happen. Anybody ever gone? Come on. Anybody get to a Starbucks and they say, hey, they paid for you? What does that make you do? Thank you. Bye. How does that make you do? Lord Jesus, I had a brother. There was a time in which we had, that we had testimonies at church. I had a brother that came up and said, Pastor, I have a testimony. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I have a testimony. All right, all right. What is it? Mm, God's been so good to me. All right, brother, go ahead, brother. Now go ahead and, and, and you can give your testimony. Church. This is him. Church. God is so good. I was in line in the ATM. And the person in front of me left $500 in the ATM. They left them. Pastor, can you believe that? They just left them there for me to grab them and take them. And there's the brother in the back, you know, ratero. And I'm like, mm -hmm. we're no longer going to allow people to give a testimony unless they write it down so we can know what they're going to do. Can I tell you, God's been so good to us. And we take the $500 in the ATM. I'm telling you today, you, you need to understand that God restores you so you can restore. 
and you start restoring other people. I remember uh, my dad stopped working on Saturdays. That was his busiest day in the clinic. He gave up money for true, for true treasure. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to coach you. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a volunteer in youth ministry. Many of us don't know what this is because we never saw it as an example. So we got to our grandparents' house and everybody was fighting because they never put themselves second. So they cannot receive fruit of first. <laughs> they cannot receive the first fruit when they never put themselves second. <laughs> but I've seen what restoration happens when you put yourself second. And today, God wants to use you to restore the next generation. What do you want your kids to do? What do you want your grandkids to do? The way you treat your parents is the way they're going to treat you. You know why I call my grandma every day? I saw the way my dad took care of my, her mom. You know why I care for my mom today? I saw the way my mom took care of my grandpa, takes care of my grandpa. I'm telling you, maybe they won't listen to what you say, but the time will come when they will do what they see you do. And you got to be willing to say, God, I'm going to put in the work. Say it with me, put in the work. It says that they got there and they said, come on, let's do something about this. I'm not a victim anymore. Come on, somebody. You're not a victim anymore. God has placed his spirit in you. It's time for you to start rebuilding, rebuilding what God has placed in you. Rebuild your marriage. Rebuild that relationship with your kids. Well, pastor, they don't want to spend time with me. I know they don't. Do you? Because if you do, you'll make it happen. Where there's a will, there's a way. I told the, the marriage seminar yesterday to the couples, listen, happy wife, happy life. Amen. Come on, put a smile, ladies, in the house. Am I right or not? Amen. Happy wife, men in the house, if you can be honest, come on, say the truth. Happy wife, happy life. Amen. And Pastora said, because she she's, you know, she's practicing her English, she goes, happy day, happy night. <laughs> she says, as Pastor Pepe said it, you know, I said happy, <laughs> I said Happy wife, happy life. And Pastora says, as Pastor Pepe says, happy day, happy night. And I said, amen to that. <laughs> See, I, I, I got to restore. I need you to get this. I got to restore the little things. They start looking into what the door needed. And I don't just work in my office. I don't just work. I want you to get this. I don't just work when I volunteer. I don't just, just so, to see what happens. I work with excellence because I know who I'm working for. So I put my hands for good, not to bring someone down, but to get someone up. Can I challenge you to do that this week? Can I challenge you to be a restorer? In chapter 4 of Nehemiah, the story keeps telling us as we're getting ready for the conclusion. It says, but it, it so happened when San, Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, I want you to see this. There's always going to be people that are going to be naysayers. That he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burned? Are they able to rebuild? See, the enemy will always try to attack you. And he goes and gets people to stop. And many times, it's just thoughts in your mind that come into your head and says, I cannot do this. There's a war for you. Listen, there's a war for you to do more because God has placed something in your heart. And the enemy knows that if you just say, I can do this, I can do all things through Christ, and you start doing, there'll be change happening in your marriage. See, it's not that my parents said, we're not going to sign, and that's how they stayed together. It's that they work, they worked at it. They work at it every day. Every day. Every day I choose you. Many people tell me, well, pastor, it's just it's so hard for me to reconnect in the church, especially with COVID, especially with everything that's happening. It's so hard for me to reconnect in my family. It's so hard to reconnect with my kids. All they want to do is video games. And I tell them, listen, are you willing to put in the work? Because if you put in the work, I promise you, God will restore. But you got to fight. They start rebuilding. Look at chapter 4. We're going to keep reading. 
chapter 4, verse 9 through 17. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Come on, somebody. Set a watch day and night. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing. And there's so much rubbish that we're not able to build a wall. You might be there. Oh, man, this is so heavy. We can't do this. Next verse. And let's skip to verse 13. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. And I set the people according to their families. I need you to get this. Uh, Nehemiah is saying, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these people here, and I'm going to put them according to what? Come on, wake up. See, do you see why the enemy wants to destroy family? Because it's what God wants to use to rebuild. Because <laughs> God is what God uses to build a nation. So the enemy comes against families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Bows, I'm sorry. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. And fight. Listen to this. Come on, that's for somebody. Fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Verse 16. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction. Come on, we don't judge people that are doing something different than us. <laughs> half of them worked at construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore, and, and wore armor. And the leaders, come on, come on, am I preaching to somebody now? And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. You got to be behind the house of Judah, behind the worship. Judah is who worships, is who are chosen for worship. Are you listening to this? You got to be behind the house of worship. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves. Who? Come on. Loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other hand, what did they do? They had their weapon. They had their sword. They kept on working with one hand, but the other hand, come on, somebody, come on. Come on, barrio in the house. Ready to work. Come on, those of you that, that, that know what I'm talking about, those of you that have gone to quad this past time, you should be doing what I'm talking about. You keep one hand on the wheel and the other one and the bat. Come on, somebody. You know, when you know, when you understand that there's, there's something that wants to destroy you, Something that wants to take away God's given purpose in your life, the mission God's called in your life, your family. And you say, you know what, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to work. What we do, many of us, even especially those of us that think that are religious, is we work with both hands. We work with both hands and we stop using the sword. We work with both hands. With one hand, we're saying, yes, I'll put this up. With the other hand, you're destroying and breaking down because what you're doing is criticizing. See, the Bible says that the weapon, the sword, is the word of God. It also says that our mouth has life. You can have the power to have life or death. And many of us are not seen rebuilding in our families because what we're doing is speaking the problem instead of speaking the answer. Who's the answer, church? I didn't hear you. Who's the answer? So stop speaking the problem and start speaking Jesus. With one hand, I'm working, but with the other hand, I'm using the sword. Every promise that he's made in my life is going to come true. He is our healer. He is our provider. He goes before me. There's no weapon form against me that can prosper. I continue to worry. Come on, somebody. But I'm taking down the sword and speaking the truth. But pastor, I've seen so many things in my life. I've seen people that said they're Christian, but they don't walk. Yes, let me tell you something. Maybe they're not walking in integrity. Are you? Are you? God's calling you to be a restorer. Restoration happens to those that see the need, see the problem, and put their hands to work. Today, God wants to restore things in your life that you think are in ruins. It's not too late. It's not too late to rebuild.